This video is going to document the making of the Final Fantasy IX epic orchestral medley. I started with Forgotten Memory in the Storm because it seemed like an appropriate place to begin. For those of you who don't know, this particular track was composed for a live orchestra and recorded in the studio. The same is true of all the cutscene music. There wasn't too much I could do to make it sound more orchestral than it already was in the game, but I did make quite a few changes to it. They're probably pretty subtle. One thing I did was I increased the tempo a little bit. I added quite a bit of flourishes with the harp, as you'll see in a moment, and I also added a little tiny bit more glockenspiel. I changed the way that the timpani was played slightly. I made the trombones and trumpets a little bit more staccato. And I played with the volume of the strings just to add emphasis to slightly different parts, just so that it was sort of unique. Basically what I was going for was to make it sound as though a different orchestra had performed the same piece. I'll play the original and my version side by side just so that you can see the slight differences. I'll show off some of the fancy harp work that I did. I was never able to find the original sheet music for this piece, so I was forced to look at a MIDI, and uh, that was okay, except there was a particular harp part that was in the original, honestly my favorite part of the entire song, and no MIDI version of it ever included that part. It has 28 notes in it, and every MIDI version available only had about 4 to 6 notes. They were just sort of summing up what the harp part did. And there's a good reason for it. It's incredibly complex. It's really hard to pick out by ear because it's being played while a bunch of other instruments are being played very loudly. But I did manage to do it. It might be one or two notes off, but it still works in the harmony pretty well. Here, I'll play you my finished version of this movement so that you can see it in conjunction with the sheet music. If you've heard the finished version of this medley, you might remember that the second movement is the overworld theme. I composed a unique transition between the first and second movements, but I'm just glossing over that because if I documented every single part of this medley, the video would end up being 30 to 40 hours long, so I'll only show you how I made some of the transitions. As I did with the previous movement, I added quite a few harp embellishments to this piece. You can probably tell I'm skipping around a little bit. Right here, I'm blending Crossing the Knoll with At the Southgate Border. To do this, I took a MIDI version of At the Southgate Border and transposed it so that it was in the same key as Crossing the Knoll. And then I copy and paste the notes, and I put them onto the orchestral staff in whatever position I want them to be. I often change the instrument configuration a little bit just to customize it. 
And then if I'm mixing two pieces together, as I'm doing here, I'll adapt one of them so that it's in the style of the other. Or more frequently, as I'm doing here, I'll try and blend the styles of both songs. This is how I make a lot of my transitions between different movements in my medleys. If it's a faster, intense song, I'll sometimes taper it off towards a mellow song, or adversely pick up the pace. Sometimes I'll add some rhythm from the next movement into the current movement so that the transition's more smooth. Sometimes I'll add instruments from the next movement into the current movement, and often I'll take the instruments from the current movement and just sort of fade them into the next movement, or carry them on for a little bit, add embellishments. If you've heard the finished medley, you might have noticed that the place I will return to someday, or the intro music, I added quite a few medieval touches because I wanted to take that aesthetic just a little bit further. I'm going to show you the Ableton portions of this project now. You can see some of the touches I added to this piece in order to amplify its medieval aesthetic. I added some percussive elements as well as some medieval sounding harp. And of course in the finished version there are a few more woodwind harmonies as well. The Garretin World Instruments VST, something I'm fond of using in my remixes as well as my original music, offers a wide variety of exotic percussive instruments. Here's a little personal touch I added into the Overworld music using a trumpet. I'll go back to the first movement for a moment here. I'm focusing on just the percussion, the trumpets, and the harp so that you can hear all of the things I changed or added to the piece. And I want to show you that impossibly beautiful harp section one more time. This part here I actually made up as part of the transition I mentioned earlier from the first movement to the second one. There's a general order I usually prefer loading my instruments in. I start with percussive sounds, then I typically load in the more melodic dissonant sounds like pianos, harps, harpsichords, guitars, that kind of thing. Then I load all the woodwinds and brass, and finally I load the rest of the string instruments. Sometimes I vary this order depending on what instruments I want to be more prominent. I've personally found that the order that I load the instruments in will have a profound effect on the end product, so this is basically the order which over time I've learned is the easiest and the most suitable for equalization. Now that the oboe is present, the song is really starting to come together. I considered several different instruments in order to recreate the fubsy backtrack of the Overworld song, but in the end I landed on a bass flute, which you can see actually sounds a little bit like the electronic instrument used in the original. I added some variance effects to the bass flute. When I do this, the variance effect typically makes any given instrument sound a little bit more like it's being played live, by randomizing certain effects so that a note being played never quite sounds the same way twice. Once I add a little bit of reverb to this bass flute, the echo will actually recreate the effect of the electronic backtrack. I've added some jovial French horns to try and underscore the piece, and just give it a little sense of power and optimism. I'll just give you another sample of the place I'll return to someday with more of the woodwind instruments added in. I did this to give the melody just a little bit more depth, but also so that it would transition more easily with the fourth movement. I'll show you that transition as I work on the strings for this section.
Here's that part again with a few more string instruments added. Right here, this is Phoebe's theme in Black Mage Village combined. There are three different types of timpani sounds that I use in order to get the full orchestral effect. I'm using soft hits. These are hard timpani hits. This is a timpani roll. And here you can see that I'm using the effects together to create a more dynamic timpani sound. Here's some of the percussion from Jesters of the Moon. They're sort of like creepy rock and roll jesters. I vary it a little bit here and there just so that it sounds more realistic. This part is the percussion from Tantalus slash We Are Thieves, which are sort of combined into one song. It's very jazzy. Now it's time to add the rest of the instruments for the next few movements. Here's the horns from Vivi's theme. I decided to add some bassoon into the Tantalus movement. I feel somehow that this instrument really captures the personality of Tantalus. And of course, the Tantalus theme just wouldn't be the same without the jazzy piano. I add a tremendous amount of extra melody to every movement in my medleys, but this one probably has over 50 measures worth of original composition. You might have already noticed some things in the piano and percussion that weren't in the original. You'll hear a whole bunch of it in the piano when it transitions into Black Mage Village. It's a little bit repetitive for a few seconds here. But it's important to note that there was no piano in the original version of this song. Part of the reason I'm doing this is to make my version of the song sound a little bit more unique. But this also has something to do with the transitioning techniques I spoke about earlier in the video. I decided to go with jazz style flute for the main melody in the Tantalus movement. With this flute, I made variations on the main melody in almost every measure. The structure of this arrangement was actually somewhat inspired by the moody blues. As the flute carries over to the next section, it starts to sound just a little bit more like Black Mage Village. change a major chord to a minor one here just to help transition into regular Vivi's theme more smoothly. And now the piano part stops echoing after the tantalus part and picks up the pizzicato cello section played in the original version of Vivi's theme. I'll also be adding in some regular pizzicato cellos to this section. Just for fun, I decided to change the piano of Jesters of the Moon to a harpsichord. I thought it just made them sound just that extra bit more debaucherous. I 
As an homage to We Are Thieves, naturally I carried some of that harpsichord debauchery over to the topless movement. And it also plays most of the main melody for the Black Mages. Gestures of the Moon seemed a little bit plain in comparison to the songs around it, so I decided to give it a unique string section. Making electronic string sections sound realistic can actually be incredibly difficult. One piece of advice I'd like to give if you're a composer is that you should definitely use more than one sample if you're going to be attempting anything with violin, viola, cello, or even sometimes double bass. I usually end up making a certain percentage of each medley in the program Audacity. What you're hearing here is part of the fourth movement, uh, the play begins, Queen Bran appears. This one I was able to get proper sheet music for. This too was written for an actual orchestra and was recorded by one for the game. I added four bars that weren't in the original, you can hear them right here. As with the first movement, I did change a few little things here and there, just so that it sounds like it's performed by a new orchestra. Some of what I do with this program is line up different sections or chunks of the medley. A lot of these medleys are around 20 minutes long, sometimes even more than that. So doing the entire thing in Ableton is a good way to make the program lag. Usually I'll divide it up into three or four movements at a time. Sometimes it's just one movement that I save separately because it's particularly long or it has a lot of instruments or there's something special about it. Once that's all done, I start to layer them in Audacity, and sometimes I'll put finishing touches into Audacity as well, like a percussive element, maybe a gong or a cymbal that I missed, or just one extra flourish I thought of at the last minute. The Medain Sari movement might have been my favorite, possibly tied with Bren Ball and Vemo a la Flamenco, which then transitions in a very piratey fashion to protecting my devotion. That entire movement with those three songs sort of encapsulates the adventure feeling I got from FF9. Or at least that's what I was going for. Usually when I do a Final Fantasy orchestral medley, I try to use traditional orchestral instruments, even when the original piece had something a little bit different, or something that isn't traditionally associated with the Viennese orchestra. But in each of my medleys, I've tried to put one or two additional elements that are sort of unique to that game. In this case, it was mainly the inclusion of this accordion. I know a lot of people might not directly agree with me, but I actually find the sound of an accordion to be quite wistful. It reminds me of being at sea, or being part of some sort of time long gone. And, and the Medain Sari section of the game really added to this feeling for me. The intro part of Medain Sari will always remind me of Final Fantasy VI. Quite a few songs from that game, but in particular Mount Colts. The original Medain Sari theme was actually quite stark, which I admit was part of its charm, but I did want to take it in a slightly different direction. I added quite a few instruments to it. I wanted to increase its feeling of being mysterious and ancient, so I added some harp and a few woodwind instruments. Flamenco always enchanted me, so I definitely made this one richer. I added a lot of stuff to it, including including a few sword fighting sound effects and some crowd cheering. This harp part wasn't in the original either. And speaking of human noises, another one of the things I used Audacity for was to record the vocal part. That, of course, I layered on top of Song of Memories. Something which I hadn't originally intended to transition from Beatrix's theme, Loss of Me, but it ended up flowing rather smoothly in the end.
I'm just going to play you a few chunks of this medley with all the instruments included. The strings got added last and they add quite a bit of depth to the things I've played before. Not too many strings have been added to protecting my devotion yet, but it might be nice to see some of the framework of this piece. In the Medane Sari intro I used a bit of bassy cello to add drama to the piece. Song of Memories was tapered off and transitioned into Secret Library to Guaria. Currently I've only got harp, triangle, and piano playing this part. This movement then flows into You're Not Alone. To make this transition smooth, Zaguerio's chords became just a little bit more serious and haunting at the end. I actually blended them together using a few passages from Passing Sorrow, which seemed almost like a cross between the two melodies. After You're Not Alone comes Terra, one of the prettiest songs in the game. It uses one of the main melodies of the game, but it does it in a pretty unique way, so I thought it would still stand apart from the place I'll return to someday. I actually sectioned off this melody into four different harp parts. I did this because I wanted it to sound as realistic as possible. The glockenspiel instrument persists. It was sort of a staple in my You're Not Alone movement, and I carried it over to Terra, and it will also carry over to Brand Ball, which follows right afterwards. Uematsu uses a lot of harp in his work, but this song uses a huge amount of harp, so I wanted to have a bunch of different samples, just so that it sounds more alive, like there's more variance in the way that it's being plucked and the way that it's being played. I made a few changes to the harp glisses in this piece in Ableton Live rather than Noteworthy, just because it's actually better to use live to get more live-sounding notation than a MIDI program. The MIDI program is just a little bit too precise, especially for something like a harp gliss, where someone's fingers are plucking the harp very organically. I came in here and edited all the notes individually to make some of them more precise or less precise. The result was that it sounded like every measure where the harps are being glissed sounded unique. Terra and Bren Ball were really destined to be played one after another. I mean, it's pretty clear. It's got the same harp glisses going on here. It has almost exactly the same set of instruments. It's got a similar tone. It's got the same timing. The tempo is almost identical for both songs. I made it the same tempo in, in my medley because I wanted it to transition more smoothly. In spite of the arpeggiated harp, the chords in this part of Brand Ball are actually pretty understated in the original, so I'm kind of glad to be able to show you them without all the other instruments playing just so that you can see how pretty they are. It's actually a pretty unique chord progression. It sounds kind of typical, but there's a, a sudden change to a major chord in a delightfully unique way. I used this beloved harp of mine to transition Brand Ball into Two Hearts Not Captured, the song that plays at the very end of the game when uh, Zidane appears on the stage and throws off his cloak. The original song actually cuts off suddenly, and it, I, th I think they do that for dramatic impact right at the end. And that's followed by the cutscene of Princess Garnet running down the stairs after him. Well, when we get to the end of this video, you'll see that I've actually extended the piece because I've always wondered what the rest of it would sound like if it continued. You can hear little bits of what I'm talking about here with the horns. I continued them on further than they went in the original.
also that bit of harp just before that was playing the prelude is actually how I'm ending the piece. I'm excited every time I add a new instrument to one of my racks. This time I'm starting with bassoon because it carries a significant portion of the melody for this whole chunk of the medley. It's also instrumental, no pun intended, in adding dramatic impact to the beginning of You're Not Alone as it comes out of Daguerre. In this piece, it's necessary for me to add some contra bassoon to my regular bassoon, just to hit those extra low notes that a bassoon can't normally hit. And uh, you can hear, if I play them together, it sounds at points like one instrument is continuously playing, and there are actually two. And at points, because the contra bassoon is a very different timbre, I would describe it as a very rich, earthy timbre, um, sometimes you can hear the switch if you're listening for it. And that was just a little bit of a taste of the melody. I used a muted trumpet for the chorus of You're Not Alone. I'll also be combining that with a clarinet shortly. That was a sizable chunk of the transition I described with passing the sorrow, bridging the guario with You're Not Alone. I used oboe to add mystique to that particular movement. I use oboe in a very similar way for terra. In this movement, I'm actually using two different oboe voices just to just to add that degree of variance I've described with other instruments. The flute carries the most significant portion of the secret library melody. A very important finishing touch is the harp harmonics. In the original version of Duguerio, there was a guitar playing all of the melody, and uh, one of the main highlights of the piece was guitar harmonics. I use a harp to do the same thing here. Now we're hearing a section of brand ball with the flutes and oboes included just give you a chance to check out those lovely chords again. The flute also carries a significant portion of Two Hearts Not Captured, but it wouldn't sound nearly as floaty and ethereal without these clarinets underscoring it with their lovely harmonies. Here are those lovely brown ball chords again. I'm starting to add strings to this section of the medley now. In You Are Not Alone, the cellos and the bass significantly increase the emotional effect of the piece. And 
to conclude this video, I'm going to show you a few finished clips of these last five movements of the medley. <laughs>